I guess the question fans will want to know is is when are you going to get the Ben tattoo? I'd do it. I mean, he's, you know, my, my best friend for yeah. my entire life. I'd, I'd get his tattoo on my arm. I wouldn't care. Oh. Okay. Our next guest, uh, you may know from such brilliant films, obviously, the Bourne franchise, the talented Mr. Ripley and Goodwill Hunting, but I'll always know him for playing the role of baseball fan at Fenway Park in Field of Dreams. <laughs> Give it up for Matt Damon! Yeah. Thank you. Uh, do you remember that role well? Well, uh, yeah, because I played it with 3,000 other extras. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing, though, isn't it? Like, just out of all of those people, like, so I bet how many people that can you split off and see who did what out of that little, like, kind of, you know, selection of extras? Yeah, well, Casey Affleck and Ben Affleck were there, so... What, so, as yeah. well as extras? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We all grew up together, and we used to do any extra work that came through town, and um, Ben and I actually shared a bank account when we were kids. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah, we would put all the money that we made from local work, and then we could use that money to travel to New York to audition for bigger things. Wow. That's Unreal. Cool... You have turned into, obviously, such a massive star. And, and Matt, the new film Oppenheimer is absolutely incredible. We were lucky enough to go and see it. I have a 12-month head start. 18. How could you possibly know that? Build a town, build it fast. Let's go recruit some scientists. Who gave them the power to destroy themselves. I mean, congratulations. Thank you. Firstly, I mean, the premiere, you had, was it in Paris last night? Yes, yeah. In Paris last night. And we, we saw you, you had your, your family there. I did, yeah, yeah. I had three of my three of my daughters. One one of my daughters kind of like patently refuses to see any movie that I'm in if she thinks it's going to be good. Right? <laughs> really? Like, really? Why? Yeah, she hasn't seen Good Will Hunting. She hasn't seen <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's kind of a running joke, and she's sticking with it. Are they your harshest critics? Would you say like when when you've got a film out? Are they the people that you go to? What do you, what do you think, or is it your closer friends? Yeah, they're no, they're they're. Uh, it, it depends. I mean, they're all different. Like my the the the, the my one my 17 year old daughter just loves to give me a hard time. <laughs> Right. So, like, I did this movie, The Great Wall, which she heard wasn't good. So she went and saw it. <laughs> and, and she goes, Dad, and she, she, we had friends over for dinner. She was talking about the movie. She goes, she kept calling it The Wall. She kept calling it The Wall. And I finally go, look, Isabella, it's called The Great Wall. And she goes, Dad, there is nothing great about oh, that movie. Oh, <laughs> that's great. I, I heard you've got, have you, is it right that you've got all their names tattooed on you as yeah, well? Yeah, yeah. That's so lovely. I love that you get everyone that's important to you tattooed on your arm. You've got your wife's name as well. I, I did. It actually started, I was, you know, this is, I think I got my first tattoo when I was like 42 years old. And um, <clears throat> we were just sitting there in New York and my wife goes, we're getting tattoos. It was just out of nowhere. And I was like, okay. And we always had this deal that if we got tattoos, we'd, we'd do it with um, the guy who did, um, you know, most of Heath Ledger's tattoos, a right. friend of ours. And so we called him up and he just like skateboarded over <laughs> like on a Sunday morning. <laughs> And I didn't even know what I was going to get tattooed, so I just got her name. And then I looked at Heath's arm; he had a he had a uh, yeah, on his laptop, and just grabbed a tattoo that Heath had on his arm and put that on. And then oh. so those were my two tattoos for a while. And then I was like, well, I got to add the kids, and so I added the kids. So what name. did your wife get? Uh, she got my name, and uh, and then also the same symbol that Heath had on it. We oh, both have so it because nice. she was friends with him. I too. guess the question fans will want to know is is when are you going to get the Ben tattoo? <laughs> uh, what, the, the giant phoenix? Yeah. Or the, yeah. <laughs> I just, yeah, yeah. Where, where are you going to get Ben's name just tattooed? On, has he asked at all? And just been like, he on. hasn't. I'd do it. I mean, he's you know my my best friend for yeah. my entire life. I'd I'd get his tattoo on my arm. I wouldn't care. Oh, uh, very good. I mean, talking of friends and and you know the Oppenheimer cast is unbelievable. I have to ask you about this photo that's been doing the rounds because this looked like a great night out. Yeah. There is there is a photo <laughs> doing the rounds of you, Emily Blunt, Robert Downey Jr., John Krasinski. Uh, Killian Murphy on a rooftop bar, but what is the story behind this picture? Em and John and I uh, live in the same building in New York, and so um, so that's on the rooftop of the building, and and uh, and we had the guys over because we were in New York doing press, and Downey was insisting he was like, we got to take a picture, but he was like, John's, you got to be in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> And, John, and you have to look like you're photobombing it. And John's like, I, I don't want to do it. And Downey's like, you got to do it. And then it went viral. That And everyone was like, is, is John in the movie? Yeah. <laughs> that's the thing. You try and look out for him. I'm sad enough to have Googled the pizza place that's in it as well. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. it was fantastic pizza, Mate, by the way. Yeah, oh, yeah. really? Very, very well, it's tough to get a bad piece of pizza in New York. Yeah, that's oh, true. Very true. And, and look, Sean, Sean's mentioned a couple of the names there in this film, Matt. And they are... Incredible. I mean, Killian Murphy, Robert Downey Jr. You've got Florence Pugh, Emily Emily Blunt, uh, Remy Malik. So many more as well. It was unbelievable. Um, we we haven't got uh, so much time with you, obviously, because you're such a busy guy going around and, and doing this promo for the film. But we just wanted to ask: out of 
this cast member, out, out of these cast members, out of the crew, who is the most likely, right, to stay in the accent they're portraying even when the cameras aren't rolling? <laughs> Uh, that's a good question. I would say probably Killian. Killian, ha first of all, Killian, it's one of the great screen performances I've ever seen. He's wow. amazing mm -hmm. in this movie. Um, and, and the whole movie is, was put on his back and, and, you know, and that's why it works. Um, but he had such a, the, the character that he plays is so different. Like we were doing press the other day with, uh, and Christopher <laughs> Nolan was with us and he just kept looking at Killian and finally he goes, it's so strange to hear you talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because it, it's so different. The, you know, he just really kind of embodied this guy and he, and he had to, it was, he was in every single frame of the movie basically. So he had to just kind of go into this tunnel for, for months and, uh, you know, he lost all this weight. He, yeah. he just, he looks so much like Oppenheimer and it's just a, it's just an awesome performance. Crazy. Well, Right, okay, so that's that one. Yeah, I guess on the question of, it feels to me like it was such a, everyone's so disciplined with this, it, everyone took it on. Who would you say was most likely to sleep in and be late to work? Nobody's late to Chris Nolan. <laughs> no. Do you no. do like do actors do like fines in that? Like, because like you know, like if yeah. you see like like football players or stuff like that, if you're late to training, you, they'll they'll do like a little fines jar or anything. Yeah, like, no, no, we do don't, that. we don't, we don't do that. But uh, but it is. I remember on like like o the Ocean's Eleven movies. Yeah, we really like everybody was always like ten minutes early because you didn't want the last person to show up got a round of applause. Did they? So oh. that was, <laughs> So, which is worse than a fine, yeah. right? When you walk in and 11 other people are clapping you out, you're like, oh, man, this is bad. Who was that in Ocean's Eleven? Was it Clooney? No, 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 no. He was Clooney, never late. No, no, never, never late. Brad would have been more likely to be late than George. George was very, very, uh, you know, he, 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 he would always be early. I love that. that. Um, I, I mean, look, this film is obviously quite a heavy film, and I always think the way a lot of, especially British people, cope with something that's very serious is just trying to have a bit of a laugh in between. Out of you guys on this set, who would be most likely to try and make the other one corpse and start laughing? Oh, me and Emma are hopeless. Yeah, yeah, because we're good friends. <laughs> we, you know, we see each other all the time. And I'm, you know, John and I, you know, her husband and I wrote a movie together 10 years ago. Like, so we we hang out and it's, we, Emma and I did a movie together called The Adjustment Bureau a long time ago. And uh, and we just, we, we could barely make it through a scene. Yeah, we're <laughs> horribly unprofessional. I love that. Yeah. I love Absolutely it. Absolutely love it. And, and and finally, I guess for us, who is the most like, because this is another thing that, that you guys have done so many amazing films and the props from these films are incredible. So who do you think is the most likely to to take something from set? Who's the most likely to steal something from set? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. I hope Killian took maybe his hat or, or his pipe or yeah. something. Some of those iconic Oppenheimer things because uh, he should he should frame those and put them up. I mean, it really, you know, uh, he deserves it after that performance. I think I took I, on the talented Mr. Ripley. I think I took my green bathing suit. Did my, you? Yeah, yeah oh, like wow. twenty five years ago or something, which is like before you guys were born. But, <laughs> but it you, was it was a really sorry. Do you have that hanging up somewhere? No, I don't remember what happened to it. I oh. think it I think it ended up in like a Planet Hollywood somewhere, and then they went out of business. So anyway. <laughs> I love yeah. it. I love it. And and can I just say, Matt, thank you so much for coming and talking about Oppenheimer today. Yeah. Uh, but but also. We, we didn't get the chance to talk to you about it. Air, by the way, one of my favourite films that I've watched this year. Oh, thank so you. So congratulations on that. I'm surprised you didn't say I didn't take home one of the, the Jordans or something like that. Yeah, no, we got to pay for those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Well, look, Oppenheimer is out Friday. It is so, so great. It's awesome. Do go check it out. Till then, please give it up for the legend that is Matt Damon, thank everyone. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you.